Sorry, if someone gets the door, I'll get it real quick. Maybe someone comes to the door, I'll get it real quick. All right, so Vulcan Friar. So it seems that there's a lot of pieces that are breaking in the school cafeteria. Uh, an oven was bad. We got a mixer here that we're working on. And, and now they emailed me today and said, hey, could you look at one of my fryers? The fryer's not working. So I went over there and looked at it. I got an idea of what's wrong, but we're gonna go over and troubleshoot it together. Um, I don't have this whole manual. This whole manual is 64 pages, so I'm not gonna print 64 pages and you know carry that over there. So we're gonna have to look at this. I wanna point out a few key things, and then when we look at it, I'm gonna actually point out the parts, like what we're looking at, like what each part is, what the part does, mm -hmm. and so forth. The controls on here, on this particular one, are a little more complicated. Um, the one we have just has this up and down arrow, this center button, this up and down arrow, and a screen. It doesn't have this many buttons on it, but it's the same model that it does cover what they call VK, TR, gas fryers, with or without what they call a clean screen plus. That's just, the clean screen is, is talking about the unit. So um, I did print out the actual wiring diagrams of all those models. And just so you know, the model that we are looking at, and I can't look at it now because it's on the phone that's recording, but the model we're looking at was a VK unit that goes with that unit. So that's the model we're looking at. So he says, hey Richard, can you look at the fryer? And one of these things said with the fryer was that, um, the, uh, with the fryer is he said that He's got two of them, one on the left and one on the right. The one on the right works. You press start, it loads up the, the program on the fryer because it's a digital fryer like a microwave with buttons on it. And it loads up and it says heating. The other one right next to it, when you press power, it goes right into draining and it doesn't turn the heater on. And you can press the buttons and it won't do anything at all. Okay? so. What, what, what do you think drain is on a fryer in the first place before we like even talk about the troubleshooting of the product? If I told you the fryer had, it was draining, what, what's it draining? Like if you got a refrigerator, it goes in a defrost, it has a drain down there for the defrost, right? It runs down into the condenser. Washing machine has a hose, it drains the water. The dryer is an air vent, not a drain, but yeah. So what do you think a fryer would drain? What's inside of a fryer? Grease. Grease, Grease or oil. Mm -hmm. So there's a valve down there that you use to drain out the oil. So like, you know, there's only so many times you can cook in it before the grease mm -hmm. gets dirty and then everything you're cooking there tastes horrible. So, you know, quite often they have to drain all that oil out, do a complete wash down of that product, and then, you know, fill out. Now, it wouldn't be an automatic drain like a washing machine, a drain pump just throws the water out. This would be a manual drain that would be controlled by the user, and he would either have it run into one of two things, either a bucket or container, or if he has a grease trap system, that the commercial kitchens have a grease system where that grease is drained out and it goes right into a tank outside, and a company comes and extracts that grease. So anyways, this is all the, the minor stuff to it, but let's take a look a little bit more at the unit. And so here's all the different breakdowns of the different models and what diagrams and stuff that, that's provided to you, nothing major. This manual I got off of uh, Parts Town, and I'll give you all the, mo the model number if you all want to look it up yourself. Um, but this was a 2K V, uh, no, 2 VK65 DF. That's the model that we're using right now. Oh, no, that's the three. three the three. This one. Oh, yeah. 2VK65 DF is the model number of the unit that we're working on right now. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and like I said, I, it's not that it's that important, but this model does go for the one we're going to look at. Uh, the Clean Screen Plus is the filtration system that they use in the oil. So, in other words, when you fry, sometimes little pieces of french fry get in the oil, or, or sometimes, like if you fry a potato and the skin come off, whatever, you have hard 
particles that get mixed with the oils. So some of these units have a filtration system where they run the oil through there and they have screens or filters that filter the hard food deposits from the oil. Mm -hmm. So you can still use the oil, but you're not like, put an old burnt french fry with the new french fries or something like that. Mm -hmm. So that's the filter system here. Yeah. Okay, so we're not gonna go into that. So here's the controls, that's mechanical. We do have, we do have a display here. I do wanna see if that has a US, for some reason it just slowed down, okay. So this is our display here, the solid state control. It has a screen, has five buttons on it. We don't have all of these buttons. Those same five are right here, but we have four options with this extra one here. This one here is left and right. So in other words, it's a single unit, but it has two frying compartments, two separate for different controls and different temperatures. You can fry fish in one and french fries in another, and that way you're not getting tastes overrun and stuff like that. When you see McDonald's, you see a bunch of little fry baskets but they're frying chicken nuggets, they're frying filet of fish sandwiches, they're frying chicken sandwiches, they're frying french fries, so they have different ones for different things so that the oils don't mix. But this is just a single large fryer. And he's got two of them connected together on a single unit. So we want to look for the solid state control when we're looking for information on that. Okay? So we go further down a little bit. Let me get down here. I want to get into the actual troubleshooting. I'll point stuff out to you when we get down there. Let's see here, component location. This is behind the fryer, so. Component location. What did, what did I say that the customer stated is happening when they turn it on? Not that it's not draining. As a matter of fact, he doesn't have oil in either one of those fryers. So they're both empty right now. He drained them, okay? But when he press starts, one of them says heating. When he press start on the other one, it doesn't say heating. It says what? Draining. So it's not an error. And, I, and I'll show you why it's not an error. It's just telling you what the machine's doing. So take a minute and, and look at this assembly here for a second. What do we got? We got a USB port. I'm going to see if that, that unit has one. I'm just curious. I don't even know what to do with that USB. We'll have to look at it because it's been a while. When I worked on it, we didn't even have computers, and now you want the USBs. So here we got a power switch. That's how we oh, turn the unit on. Mm -hmm. That is separate from the buttons that I showed you earlier on the solid state display. Mm -hmm. If you don't turn that power switch on, you can't press the button and start it from there. Mm -hmm. Okay? But we got a filter hose switch, a USB port. We got a high limit prior to this date. What does that mean right there? What does it say high limit position prior to 8-10-2017? What, what does that information mean? They had a certain yeah, parameter before that date. Well, no. But so over here in this area, there would be a high limit sensor or high limit device. Okay, and it is only in this position mounted right here physically, you would see it there, on um, any product made before this date. After this date, it may be in another location, but not in this picture, okay? So then what do we got here? Blower assembly. Blower valve assembly. So blower valve assembly might be for uh, blowing the heat, blowing the flame, because this is a gas unit it's got a gas furnace inside of it that fires up, okay? Um, and so here, what is this? Drain valve. Drain valve, and what is that? It'll not switch. Okay, so this is the valve okay. that the chef would manually rotate to drain the oil. Like I told you, when they're, when they're cleaning the unit out, they're gonna manually pull that handle and let that oil drain out of the unit, okay? What, what do you think this is for? Just think of what the name says. What do you, th yeah. based on, and this is, this is the thing, see, this is my thought process. I didn't have this book in front of me. I did open the book in the cafeteria, 
but I'm sitting at the at the chef's desk and I'm scrolling through it really fast because he's got to go for an appointment. Mm -hmm. So I'm just looking at pictures and quickly reading, looking for like, does it have a diagnostic program where I can go in there and diagnose it? Yeah. And I and I really couldn't feel it, but I kept running into drain valve. And I kept seeing it throughout. I, I'll scroll through and show you a couple other pictures. You're going to see the word drain valve multiple times. I'm like, man, they talk a lot about this drain valve. It's nothing more than just a valve you open and let the oil out. I mean, if I want to service it, who cares about this manual valve? Because I got computers. I got the gas system. I got a furnace in there to heat it up and everything. I need to know how the controls work if I'm going to troubleshoot this. I don't care if it's it, like a water valve. I just turn it on. It's not even an electrical part. But we do have a switch attached to it. What do you think the switch is doing there? Maybe a safety. Switch. It's a safety for what though? What do you think? What is the function of that switch? Well, so it doesn't open. The drain. Well, who opens the valve? Fill up the drain. Does the control board open it, or do I open it? You open it. I open it. So the switch wouldn't open the valve, would it? So why, why, what would a switch be there for? If I open up the door, there's a switch inside a refrigerator, right? When I open and close the door, what does it do? The switch does what? It turns the light on. Tells the light, come on, but tells the fan in the freezer to stop sometimes. Mm -hmm. On a dryer, you close the door, there's a switch, right? Mm -hmm. It's doing what? Stopping the cycle. Stopping or allowing the cycle to run when the door is closed, right? So in other words I'm trying to get you to think Like you may not have ever seen this before. This is the first time you're looking at this picture And you got to have an idea of how a specific little part functions If someone says hey, I want to learn washing machines. Can you yeah, I can show you diagrams I could talk troubleshooting talk testing all day Do you know what that switch does? No Do you know how to test that switch? No? Then how are you gonna fix the machine? So you gotta learn each little part one at a time and that's why when you're out there in the shop and I say take it apart, find every little part, test every little part, you have to understand that little part. Not just, I, I've had students go through the class, oh yeah, I owned it out, I owned it out, I owned it out. Do you know how it works? No, nah, not really. So what are you learning? What are you learning when you're putting the meter on? Does it teach you how to troubleshoot because you owned it out and you got 30 ohms? Yeah, it tells you what the resistance is, but it doesn't tell you how to fix it. You guys have to focus on what the part is, what the part does, and how it works. So if I got a switch there, it's a drain valve switch. Well, if I move the valve handle, if I put it one way, the switch is activated. Do the other way, the switch isn't activated, mm -hmm. right? I mean... Now let's go back to what the problem is. When I normally turn on, it says heating. But now when I turn this other one on, it says what? Draining. So how does it know draining? Does it just say draining because it, the board screwed up and it says draining? Or saying draining because the valve handle may not be in the right position and the switch is not activated? Well, I activated the switch. I'm not gonna tell you what happened because we are gonna now move over to the cafeteria and check it out. But let's let's do a little bit more discussion. Wiring diagram, which which this is an analog control. Is that the one we had? Which controls do we have? Remember I pointed out to you. Y'all pay attention? What was it called? Ah y'all don't remember. Come on, I said you guys have to know which control we're using, right? Yeah. I said it on purpose. This is an analog. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at this one. Is that the one we want? Is that the control we want? We're looking right here. Is it an analog control? Yeah. Let's keep going for a second. Solid state or computer control? Solid state or computer control? Clean screen. Clean screen again is the cleaning system, but we are the solid state. I pointed it out. Remember, I showed you guys the control, so I'm going to go back real quick. I was going to go back real quick, but the computer doesn't want to go that fast. But 
There's the controls. Yeah, solid state. And I said, I we're using solid state. Now, a part of this lesson is not even how to fix the fryer. Because right now, I'm putting together, you know, that schematic thing. I have the pictorial almost completely done, the first chapter. And I got to put some videos to it. But part of the, 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 the diagram lecture is not how to follow the circuits. It's to know what information you need to troubleshoot the circuits. So if we're looking at this one, you need to know which one of these control panels you have on your unit so we can troubleshoot it. Okay? So we're on the solid state control unit. All right? And we're going to go look at the, at the fryer over there. We have one that's working next to us, so we're going to look at the startup sequence of it, of one that is working. We're going to look at the startup sequence of the one that's not working, and we're going to discuss how to troubleshoot it. But let's go back to this diagram here. What is the part that I said we're going to look, look at? No, no, no. What was the part on that machine? The drain. The drain what? The um, interlock valve. The day what? The interlock valve for the valve. Interlock valve? The switch. The switch. switch. Okay, switch. good. I want y'all. So, y'all look up there for a second. Do you see it there in the schematic? I'll even make it a little bit bigger for you. Is it? Is it? Do you see that component here? But are you looking for drain valve switch? Do you see anything that says drain valve there at all? That's a gear motor. That's a gear motor. These are relays that are turning that gear motor on. They look like contact. You've got a relay coil. You see these two here? What's the difference between these two right here? By, just by looking at it. What's the difference from that to that? One is open and one is closed. Yeah, this one's normally closed, normally open. So the line going through it means if you were to check it right now with no power on, that would give you a closed reading from five to one. On the relay, it would have numbers. Give the door. And then here, five to three would be open. But when I energize this coil, this one will open and this one will close. So we got two relays, but these are gear motors. These have nothing to do. So what, what would a gear motor be in a fryer? Why would we have a, a gear motor in the fryer? For the pump? Not the pump. It could be a pump. It could be recirculating the oil through that filter. But also some of those uh, fryer baskets, they're on a gear that goes up and down. Like, you ever seen like McDonald's, they put their fryer down and they press a button like french fries or whatever and it knows how much time to cook it and when it's done, the basket just lifts right up out of the oil so it doesn't overcook the french fries. It's automated. So they could be over there flipping burgers and just beeping, oh man, I can't go. It'll just lift it right up out of the oil for you. Okay, so that's what the gear motors are. What is this piece right here? A step-down transformer. Okay, let me just pause this for one second, please. I think I hit that button there. So what, what is this part here? It's a transformer. It takes high voltage and steps it down to low voltage. Why do we have 208, 230, and 120? How much voltage do I have there? I guess it all depends on how much I'm plugged into the wall, right? Oh, why does it have three voltage here? Because that transformer will have multiple pins to connect wires. If you have this fryer connected to a 208 voltage power supply in the wall, you would connect it to two specific wires, okay? If you had 230, you'd have two different wires that you would connect it to. And then if you had only 120, you'd connect it to different wires. And they wouldn't be the same position on the transformer, but that transformer would have like three taps. They have them on inputs of transformer, and they also have outputs of transformer. They have one transformer that has multiple pins, and you touch these two, you only got six volt, but you move this over to the next one, you could have 10 volt. Then you could have 12 and 24, 
with the same voltage coming in. Uh, on this case, it's input voltage, but we have only one voltage coming out. All the parts on this circuit have to run off of 24 volts, and this is all AC, no DC voltage at all. So we could put whatever voltage input we want, but we do have to wire the transformer that way. And the reason why that's done is instead of the manufacturer saying, well, what voltage do you have in your kitchen? Well, here, we sell you this one model. The installer has to set it up for the proper voltage. They have to know what the input voltage is in the wall, and then they would set the transformer like that. And they do that with a lot of commercial stuff like this because it could go from here, it could go to South America, it could go to other places that have different voltages. In this room alone, we have more than one voltage on the high voltage side, the 220 side. We have some 208 volt circuits and we have some 240 volt circuits. The older wiring of this building is higher voltage. When they built this room that we're in, this room was added on to the official construction of this room. And the transformer in my office and those two panels on the wall were not here originally. They put them in my room when they built this to help supply this, but they also added some extra outlets in my room and actually ran some outlets into some other labs from here too. So those panels in there control different rooms. One day I didn't realize that I hit a breaker, turned it off, and it turned off lights in one of the other classrooms. I'm like, why is, there a, why is my panel in my room controlling another classroom halfway across the class? So anyways, this is all low voltage circuits here. And we'll go back to what we were looking for was that switch. So we didn't see that valve switch here. Um, do you see it in this circuit here? We're looking for what? What was the name of the part? The drain valve switch. Drain valve switch. Drain. Do you see anything that says drain valve switch there on the wall? The, the limit switch. The, that's a limit switch. What is a limit? switch does anybody know we have them in our dryers we have them in our microwaves we have them in our refrigerators a limit switch for heat or for te or for um, electricity well the yeah. limit switch will be more usually for heat so it'll trip at a certain temperature like that's correct the limit so is that the high limit that it it it, it probably is a high limit where is the limit like, switch so it'll be 300 be something Oh, right here. Right. 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 Well, it tells you right there at 450 yeah. degrees. Once it hits 450 or higher, it's going to open up. But it's resettable. Based on that, it's a thermostat. Right. Defrost thermostat. It's a limit switch. Defrost limit switch. Same thing, right? Okay. Anybody know what a triac is? That's a we might have talked about it before. I don't think it converts uh, AC to DC. A diode converts AC to DC, but a triac actually has two diodes, both facing against each other. So that means current can't go this way, current can't go that way. Mm. But wait a minute. If I block current this way with one diode, but I block current this way with the other diode, how does it work? With a low voltage gate right there. They call that a gate. Control board sends a small low voltage here, and when it does, it bypasses those diodes like an electronic relay. So like, like these relays here, where we put power to a magnetic coil and a physical switch closes, a triac is an electronic switch. In some of our BMW washers, like the, the washing machine motor goes woof, 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 woof. Well, what's happening is the motor is being turned on and being designed to go one direction and it stops when the power's off. Now, we want to switch that motor direction and energize it the other way. We can use a mechanical relay like this. This one's closed when it's off, and then this one's closed when it's on, so I just put one direction of the motor here, one direction of the motor there, but a physical relay cannot handle this constant on and off switching, especially of something like a motor, because a motor draws higher amperage. You could do it probably with smaller items like a little LED light bulb or something. The relay could handle it, but even though that mechanical action won't last long if it's turning on and off. Electronic relays, though, they can handle fast switching. Okay? So that's what they are. Back in the days, our microwaves, instead of having a relay on a board turned on the transformer for the microwave, it had a triac in it mm -hmm. when I worked for Sears. Um, so we didn't find that drain valve switch. Okay, so we're at the bottom of the diagram now. Anybody, do we have it here? Could be the valve 
valve switch. Could be the valve switch, okay. Um, where is it connected on, on the board? The drain interlock. Okay, so it's connected here, right? Is that the only connection that's there? Okay, so what can, what could you, just by this, again, let's go back to diagrams, because like I said, this new program that I'm developing, I want to break diagrams down to the little nitty gritty. So each one of these chapters, I start real slow and work my way up. I can look at this diagram. I've never seen this machine before. This model, this diagram. I pulled it up 20 minutes before this lecture. And I can tell you everything that goes on. I can even tell you how that circuit works. What can you tell me from here to here? What is that circuit doing? How does it work? Just that circuit. You're looking at lines in a switch. But I look at it, read it like I'm reading a whole page of a book. Mm -hmm. You guys are just looking at a single line. What information can you derive by looking at it? What we, when you, yeah, but this is the switch we're looking at right here. When you manually Between move one the and valve, two. The what? When you manually move the valve, you Okay, energize. so when I manually move the valve, this switch is opening and closing. That's correct. But the circuit itself, watch what I see when I look at it, because when I want you guys to look at diagrams, I want you to see all the little things that I see. First thing I see is E1-1. E1 is the plug with the wires on it, and dash one is the first wire on that plug. This is E1-8. That means it's on the same plug E1, but it's the eighth wire. I can also get the color of the wires probably. Maybe I have to look at these numbers. We'll, we'll look at that in a second. But what does that say right there? 24 volts AC in. What does that mean? It's getting 24 volts from the... Um, so the 24 volts from my transformer is going through what color wire? Yellow. This is probably also a yellow wire. Should be the first pin on the board. And that's the voltage coming in. If I don't have voltage here, the board won't light up, right? Mm -hmm. So knowing that, also watch this. So if that's 24 volts coming in, well, this wire is connected to that wire, and it follows around through our switch here, and we'll bring 24 volts in here. When the switch is open, do I have 24 volts at this pin? That's E15, so it's the same plug from one, now five. But when this switch is open, do I have 24 volts going in? No. I have it here, but remember, it's coming in this way, but it's also gonna jump down here, and it's gonna jump down here, and it's gonna go to the board. So that's how the board knows the position of the valve. That if the switch is open and there's no voltage there, the switch is telling the board, hey, it's in one position. I don't know if it's open or closed. I think when it's like this, the switch is closed or, or vice versa. I read it somewhere in a book. But when it's closed, I'll have voltage here, and that's how the board knows whether the valve is open or closed. Okay? So you follow me there. So if I want to check this switch, I can either check it on the switch or I can check it from the board. I look for plug E1. It's the fifth wire and the first wire on that plug. And the reason why I'm guiding you to it is we're gonna go and look at it and then we're gonna troubleshoot it to determine actually what is defective. And I do have a printed copy of the diagram so we can have that with us when we're over there. But what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, take a meter and go over and check it. Now let me just point one other thing out. You guys see all these little arrows and stuff? It's a little confusing, right? What, what, what is that? 
connections. Those are called quick disconnects. That's like where one wire meets another wire and you got those two plastic plugs that you, that you separate. It may be a part, like a defrost heater has a wire on it and another wire plugs in there and that, that plug would be represented as a male and a female connected. Okay, so that's the actual switch and they're just showing the switch closed or the switch open. This is just where it would connect to the wiring harness. So you sort of like have to overlook it. It does get a little confusing looking at all these connectors on there. Okay, so it's saying a drain error. I'm guiding you to the problem. I'm going to let you sort of troubleshoot it at this point and then after I'm going to show you all the components within the fryer and show you this is this and that's what this is and everything else. Does anybody have any questions of what we talked about here so far? No. No? So you all can troubleshoot this now, right? Without me saying a dang thing? All right, come on. Two, four, six, seven. Seven bright minds here can come up with something. All right, let's go.